Welcome back to the third video in the lesson of finite element method basics, uh, which is using the weighted residual methods. In this video, we will be talking about the element equation. In the previous video, we introduced how the interpolation function works and how we can get the trial functions. And uh, we investigated uh, some uh, interesting phenomena uh, basically that uh, one of them is equal to 1 on one side and 0 on the other side, while the other is equal to 0 uh, on the first side and 1 in the other side. Now to get the element equations, we get back to the Galaskin method uh, in which we uh, uh, have the uh, uh, differential equation uh, uh, in this form where L is the differential operator while j is the excitation term. Uh, the differential oper operator gave us, uh, using the Galaskin method, gave us an equation, a set of equations that can be solved in the generalized coordinates, while the uh, uh, excitation term gave us the generalized force term. Uh, this system of equations can be solved. Uh, we also called uh, this matrix the stiffness matrix or the system matrix, and this is the generalized force uh, vector. The general term for the stiffness matrix is given by this equation, while the general term for the generalized force is given by this relation. This is a quick review of the Galerskin method. Let's use that now on our bar problem. The differential equation that governs the uh, bar problem is given here with the unknown function mu representing the displacement at any point, uh, while the differential operator is the first derivative uh, acting on the modulus of elasticity times the area multiplied by the first derivative of the, uh, the uh, displacement function, which means that this is a second order uh, function. If E and A are constants, then we will have the second derivative directly, the second derivative of U. Uh, the excitation term here, F of X, is a forcing function that acts uh, on the surface of uh, the bar. Uh, maybe it's due to uh, some uh, loading, maybe gravitational force, or any other kind of uh, field, or maybe just uh, some shear function applied on the surface. Using the interpolation functions uh, into the differential equation, we will get this equation unbalanced. So we will have the residue appearing on this side. Applying the Galerkin method, we will get back to what we already had before. Now, if we uh, uh, perform the integration by parts, we will get the boundary terms, which can be moved to the right-hand side. Uh, uh, to also act as excitation terms. These boundary terms will appear uh, uh, very clearly uh, when we apply nodal forces to our element. Now let's uh, recall that on the boundaries we have uh, the values of N1 and the values of N2 given by these relations, while the derivatives are constant uh, everywhere, so we also have these uh, derivative relations. We can substitute that into our uh, uh, weighted residual integration uh, relation. And then we uh, uh, let j equals 1. So uj, uh, nj here will be n1 in these uh, all these terms. So the equation will look like this. While for j equals 2, this is what we're going to have. Actually, if this looks too much, uh, don't worry about it. It's just mathematical foundations that we're going to be using. Uh, however, uh, I'm going to be introducing how to perform all this using vectors, which will make our life way simpler. Uh, when performing the integrations, we get the system of equation in matrix form with the stiffness matrix, the typical stiffness matrix, which we all see in bars of like elements, one minus one minus one. values of the load, P1 and P2, then that may be applied to the points of the bar. Only in compact form, this is what This is exactly 
exactly the same set of equations that we uh, would have got uh, from the Galois method. In the coming video, we will see how the assembling of the structure equations can be performed to create a set of equations that present a whole structure. In this video, we only talked about a single element, and given all the information we can know about that single element, uh, we can create this element equation. But now we will use that element uh, together with other elements uh, to create a whole structure.